So the next step, now that we've put down our base color, our spatter, and our squiggles, is to lay down um, another pass of the base color on top. So I'm just going to turn off the other layers, click and drag from the swatch here over to the head, and that's just going to sample the base color for me. So now I'll turn these two layers back on, and I'll create a new layer, rename it, and we'll call it Base Color Overpaint. <clears throat> I'll use that standard brush again with the spray stroke and we'll use that same spatter alpha alpha 7 make sure my X symmetry is turned on now in this stage what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray the base color back on top but I don't want it to be at 100% RGB opacity I actually want to dial back the opacity a little bit and just start spraying that down the idea here is I just want to start to lose some of that uh, you know, really overstated color. I just want to start pushing that back down under the surface a little bit. Now I could just do an overall fill of the entire head and then dial back the opacity, but I find that that really doesn't work very well for me because it's just it's too even, it's too clean. I want there to be some variation. I want some areas to have more coverage than others because it adds to that sense of kind of chaos, randomness that's going to really make a big difference as we further develop the paint job. You want to make sure that there is a sense of randomness, a sense of natural um, uh, irregularity to it. <clears throat> Also note that this is going to push things back a bit, which is fine. I will have to go back in and then re, uh, you know, repaint certain colors in. That's not a problem. That's to be expected. There we go. I think that just about covers it there. It's a little bit ruddy still in the cheek area. So I'm going to zoom in there. And spray back down on top of that. There we go. Now I'll go back into eyeball view mode, turn off record. And we can dial back the opacity of this using that slider. That's a little too much. Bring it up a little bit more. And here you can see the vast difference between it being turned on and turned off. So this has basically knocked back some of that skin texture a bit. So what I want to do at this point is I want to come in here and I want to sort of re-accentuate some of the color that I've put down. I want to come back and I want to reintroduce some of the purples, reintroduce some of the, the color in the lips and the recessed areas, and we'll do a little bit of what's called modeling. And when I say modeling, it's similar to what, um, what you'll find when people put highlight and shadow on for... Um, you know, street makeup or glamour makeup to change the shape of something by adding highlight and shadow to it. Well, here what we'll do is we'll spray a little bit of uh, dark area, dark down into the recessed areas and around some of the bone structure just to try and kind of accentuate it. And while I'm here, I'm going to put some color down on the horns because they're starting to actually distract me. So I'm going to call this layer horn base. Select a dark brown. And let's just pour, put some of that color down here. It's going to be really helpful to the eye just to be able to knock that back closer to what the actual final color of the horn will be. Because as it stands now, it's kind of a big white or light distracting color there, distracting shape. You notice I'm not really painting the back of the head right now, and the reason for that is because I know that we're going to be rendering this from a front view, and I just want to be able to cover as much as possible in the time frame allotted for the video. So because of that, I'm, I'm not spending too much time on the back of the head. 
And I'll probably just go ahead and paint some kind of uh, skin patterning back there anyway. Bring it around to the shoulders. You'll see that in a little bit when we get to the finishing section. So I'm not going to spend too much time doing the back of the head because it's the exact same process as the front. It's just easier because you're not dealing with a lot of color, mod color modulation. There we go. This is going to make a big difference, I think, uh, not having that um, distracting kind of uh, skin-colored horn happening there. I'm going to mask out the skin area here. and paint that horn down to the edge there. There we go. Nice. We'll turn off record mode on that and I'll just shift that up, move that layer up a bit. Move it down. There we go. Actually, I'm just going to move it back where I had it, because if I move it further into the stack, I'm going to end up catching uh, overpaint from these other layers, and it's really it's not going to be a problem to keep this, this particular horn layer where it is right now, so I'm just going to leave it there. All right. Okay, so at this stage... Let's go ahead and take a look at how to further paint into this character. I think what I'd like to do now is I'd like to actually uh, bring some more purple veininess into the character's face. Uh, I want to break up the, uh, the face a little bit more. So I'll go back to my drag rectangle stroke, vein alpha, and we'll create a new layer. We'll rename this one purple veins. Go into our system palette. Grab a bit of purple there. There we go. And I want to radiate some of these purple veins coming out of the mouth area here. the RGB intensity of that a little bit. Bring some of that purple into the eye socket area as well. It's really going to give it a nice sort of uh, irritated, gross, sickly look to bring that purple into those eyelids. Turn off my X symmetry here and bring that down across the chin area as well. actually want to knock back some of that color a little bit more and make him feel a little bit more pale. Go back to the spray stroke. I'm going to sample some color off here. Go to my system palette. See if I can't make this feel even more sickly. And we'll lay down some of this I'm going to change from that dot alpha, I'm going to change to a single dot. And if I turn up my RGB intensity, you should be able to see the effect that that has. It's sort of, here I'll do it on the horn here so you can see, it's very subtle at this point. The changes that are happening, but you want to make sure that, um, you know, even though it's subtle, you want to carry through 
and and continue pushing it. Yes, you. I'm, I really want to make this guy feel a little bit more pale. So I'm bringing this very very light valued kind of purplish tinged white through the face here. And remember, because this is this is on its own layer, I can always dial back the opacity of this. We're not locked into this. Or I can press the Alt key and use uh, an erase function on here and actually erase out from it. And if I were to go to the freehand stroke, I can erase just like that. Go back to my spray stroke here. Bring some of that down through the neck here. I'm going to go back to the cluster dots of Alpha 7. And just continue to knock that back. And going back to drag rectangle and the vein alpha. And let's bring those veins back in, those purple squiggles. select a much lighter color here veering towards white and do a little bit more squiggling using this white I'm pressing the V as in victory key to switch between my two color swatches here I'm going to bring some of that uh, bring some of that purple down in the neck here Let's bring some of this purple up into the forehead as well. It's kind of getting lost up there. I'm going to knock back that RGB intensity. Turning off my X symmetry here and then breaking that symmetry. <clears throat> 